has the best dog in this room right now? Oh, oh that's off to a good start right there. By the end of the day, you guys will be bipping people on the head and saying, <laughs> okay, who's the best handler? Yeah, okay, so we got to work out that one just a, just a little bit there. How does your dog measure up to the standard? How many of you, honestly, and I mean honestly, can say that you know your breed standard as well as you should? Okay, good, I like that. You know, how many of you feel that you should learn more about your breed standard? Absolutely. <laughs> now here, I have a little thing that I like to do, and I'll take my breed standard, and I take three highlighters, green, yellow, and uh, pink. pink. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm glad you were here yesterday. Okay, so green, yellow, and pink. Green means grooming, pink means presentation, and yellow means structure. When I read my standard of that dog, if it says something that has to do with, with grooming, I highlight that sentence in green. Sometimes that sentence can be green, pink, and yellow. But today I'm going to work on handling and we're going to work on presenting this dog. So I'm going to look at everything in pink before I do that handling session. Not only will that really teach you your standard, but it also teaches you what you need to focus on with that breed. Bulldogs. Do you have a different gait than most other people? Absolutely. Okay, you want that big, huge gait that just flies around the ring, right? <laughs> no, but does the crowd go crazy when they see that? Yeah, yeah they're like, woohoo! But it's incorrect. Good. Okay. Now here's a situation here where you did a great job. You practice what you just learned, but the dog hasn't been trained to do that yet. And, and again, you've got to practice this stuff before you perfect it. You have a drop dead gorgeous stack when you're standing in front of the dog. A lot of times people, go ahead and free stack your dog, just like you like you got there. Just like, whatever. Okay, see how this dog is stacked right in front of her? That's perfect. That's the way I want you to teach her. Yeah, you gotta do the PC flip. There we go. Okay, I want to see you do an L. Face here. Yeah. A B C D. Okay, stop. Come back. Don't do anything. I gave her something that I knew she probably hadn't practiced, so she had to think about it. When she did that, the first time she gave her dog, it was nice and smooth, really smooth. She knew what she had to do. She had a game plan there. I purposely wanted to get her head and scramble it a little bit right there, so I gave her a pattern that might have thrown her off, and it worked. So she was so focused on that pattern, did it change her gait? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and she started bouncing, didn't she? Yeah. Now, what did the dog do? Bounce. It bounced with her. So that shows two different things. First of all, if you practice all the different patterns, nothing will throw you in that ring. And second of all, whatever you do, you will, the dog will duplicate. They're like little mirrors. If you hop, they'll hop. If you skip, they'll skip. If you gate smooth, they'll gate smooth. They will duplicate what you do. So give me a nice smooth down and back. Stop. You do not need to get the attention of your dog before you gate. You can just do a little tap like this, no yanking, no pulling, no whistles, no or any of whatever that sound was. You know, you don't have to do any of that stuff. All you got to do is tap, tap, and go. Okay? So tap and go. Perfectly straight. Good. Nice, long, smooth steps. Good. Very nice. Now free stack. Bam. 
Beautiful. Isn't that nice? Pretend like you have a dog. Ignore the dog. Okay, I want you to lean forward. Now back up. Stand up. Perfect. Okay, lean forward. Back up. Stand up. That's all I want you to do. But now we're going to put a dog in your hand. <laughs> okay, so right here, I want you to be facing me. Ignore the dog. Don't tell the dog what to do. Don't do anything. You hold the end of the leash. Very end. So you're ignoring the dog. Now lean forward, back up, stand up. Good. And you're just ignoring the dog. Okay, bring the dog to the front of you so you don't trip over the dog. Sure. Don't talk. Just, okay, now look at me, lean forward, back up, 
Keep backing up, keep backing up, keep backing up. Now stand up. Perfect. Now that's what I want you to do, and get the, and the dog will eventually get to the point where it'll nail stacks right in front of you. But right now, you're not communicating. You're not working as a team. Your dog's getting the stacks in spite of you using the body language and stuff. I want you to go to the end and give me a solid free stack. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, walk backwards and stand. Yeah! You created that. Do you even need a handler? I mean, can you just send her in the ring and you sit ringside? <laughs> well, should I? Stand? Hey, tell me what's good about this dog. She has a uh, good depth of muscle. Okay. She has a long neck. She has shoulders to nose and speed. Okay. She has a turn of the upper arm. Okay. The uh, top line, rise of the moment, mm -hmm. muscular pies. Okay, good. Now that's good there, but one of the other things that she's got is she's got a personality that's very headstrong. That's right. And so she wants to take charge. So what you're going to have to do with her, and that's great in this breed. I would love to have, you know, a Ridgeback that has that strong personality like that. But one of the things you're going to have to do with her is you're going to have to get her head straight. And this is going to take practice throughout the day. Okay, you, everybody see these two fingers here? The one closest to the pinky. And the one we use when we drive on the freeway, those two fingers right there. And what we yeah. And what we're going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop in from underneath. Hi, baby. Oh, that's very good. I'm going to come in from underneath like this, and I'm going to pull this chain so it applies pressure on the back of the head. She's not going to like this. She may even throw a tantrum because here she's losing that control. Ah, ah, ah. See what I tell you? That's a good demonstration, huh? Okay, come on. Oh, well, that's very good. That's good. Okay, so I go back to this again. Uh uh, head straight. Good, good. I'm not going to put any pressure on her with eyes. Head straight. Good, good. Head straight. All I'm going to do is try to keep her head straight. This dog is very headstrong. And keeping this muzzle straight is going to be the first key for you to win in that ring because she wants to do what she wants to do. See how she's calming down now? Because I'm gaining control. Now once she realizes I'm gaining control, she's going to be like my ex-wife and want to kick my butt. You know? <laughs> she's going to say, uh -oh, whoa, 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 that's not happening. So here I am, just gaining a little control. Good job. Get straight. That was good. That was good. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. You want to try that again? Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so we're going to come in. We're going to say, head straight. She's like, uh uh, that's not gonna happen. Head straight, come on. Here's the tam tantrum. Good, good. She threw the tantrum. Uh uh, head straight. Head straight. Good. Head straight. Head straight. Very nice. Head straight. Good. Uh uh, head straight. Good. Very nice. Good. With your teeth. See, from here I can show teeth. I can even, in some breeds, open the mouth if I have to do that. See, I have full control here. Head straight. Head straight. Now, if I go back to the old method that everybody else shows, I have no control of the head when I go like this. See what she can do? I can't control any of that right there. Is she ready for this? No, she's not. But if I come in from under here and I teach her head straight, head straight, good. See how she didn't fight me that time? Because now she's recognizes, recognizing me as alpha. If she was in a situation where she got nervous or scared, who would she go to? Let's say she's got the love of her life right here, or she has me, who she just met. Who do you think she'd go to if she got scared at this point? She'd go to me, because I'm showing her that I'm the one that's in charge. Does she think that Joe's in charge? No, not at all. If you want your dogs to love you completely like they've never loved you before, you have to be the one that's in charge. Good job. Oh, thank you. Oh, very good. See that there? That was great. Okay, Joe, so I want you to get control of her head. 
No, they did not take those actual numbers. I know. It's going to be tough. Uh, let's let's I mean, put... No, that's, that's okay. I, I ought to learn without. Okay. Okay. So I would... So you can't grab from the top like you're doing. Yeah, you I have mean, to grab from underneath. I know. So I will come down here. And I'll grab those like Perfect. that. Perfect. Yep. And is it one or two fingers? Like two that? fingers. Two fingers like that. Yep. And now just keep her head straight. I don't have this pipe. Maybe it's like Yep. And now keep her head straight. Don't let her turn her muzzle up and down or side to side. And tell her head straight. Head straight. Good. Nope. I'll have to work on Yep. Get her head straight. Okay. Head straight. Like okay. That. Beautiful. Now tell me the story about her neck. She has a nice long neck. Okay. She's got sloping shoulders to note his speed. Okay. Through the turn of the upper arm. Okay. Flat back. Slight okay. rise of the loin. And muscular thighs. Was that different than the first time he showed her? Wasn't that cool? Give him a hand. That's awesome. Okay, now you're going to see another thing too. Let's keep that head straight. Don't let her turn that head. That's a test. If you let them turn their muzzle a quarter of an inch, you've just failed the test. When we, talk, when we take off. Okay, so the dog's facing that direction, we're going to take off this direction. All right, let's go. Good. See the difference there? Yeah. It didn't go into that gate. That forces the dog to go into a natural gate because it's standing like this, and when I take off, it has to cross over so it's in the perfect gate. But when I start off like this, it's going to make it go into that pace if it's straight. So that's how you break the habit of a dog who paces. When the dog says, when the judge says, take your dog around, you start them off facing like this, and then you take off. That makes sense? Now, pace. See how that works? My lead is tight, the tension, tension, tension in my gait. But when I have a freer gait, there's no tension in that. Okay, so let's see you do that. Okay, and it's got to be a takeoff. And the dog has to be perfect like this. Okay? Now, go. Let's go. Look at that, guys. Yeah. Beautiful. Woohoo! That was fantastic. You can go home now. <laughs> Wasn't that neat? Right. So when you're down in that, if the judge asks you, I want to see a pace. Right. A lot of times it's easy to do that, but to get them to come out of the pace then is more like difficult. Are popping the dog. Right. Or they do the whirlwind, or they do the circle around. And then, Everything they, go, then they cross their fingers so that it's going to work then half the time. Better. Right. That works every head time. Piece. A beautiful roll of a nose, a nice neck that comes out of the shoulder assembly at the right angle, and you won't find a better top line on the lot today. Well, what dealership do you work at? And do flangulation of the stifle. And do you do in-house financing? I could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the best part is Jackson's key. Wow. Jackson doesn't even believe that. Jackson's going, who's he talking about? <laughs> That's good. Congratulations. That was outstanding. Give him a hand, everybody. Good. A long time to yeah. Okay, let's see all the way around. Not crossing the plane. Get your hand back. Good, good. Okay, you got it. Ooh, perfect right there. Perfect. Good job.
the, the problem we have here is not that she's not smart. She's extremely smart. And what she's trying to do is she's trying to push buttons right here. So let me hold this. And the reason, there we go. And the reason why I know that it's not a problem where she's scared to death is she's being a total butt right now. And what did she try to do right before she jumped off the table? She tried to put her paw on her, which is claiming her. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let her have this little tantrum right here. This is fine. She can have this little tantrum. And it's not going to hurt her. It's just kind of like a situation where you have a little kid in a grocery store, and they say, buy me that candy. And you say, if you don't buy me that candy, I'm going to hold my breath until I pass out. Okay. <laughs> I'll be in the furniture section uh, checking out couches right there. So you have to let this dog have this tantrum until it's over with. How do you know when it's over with? When the dog either falls asleep or gives in, takes a step forward, then it's over. What I'll do every once in a while is I relieve a little bit of the tension on it so the dog says, okay, I can bump it forward a little and just let this dog have this little temper tantrum right now. It will get over this. Oh, that was good. That was very good. Yes, it was. That was great. The dog walked towards me. It's not afraid. Not at all. It wants to be rescued now. Oh, that's very good. So we'll just keep throwing our little tantrums. Let's think about the classroom, and we had three different categories of dogs. What do we have here? Red fox. We have the red fox. Come here. So is this, are we going to be able to train this dog? Yes. Yeah, but what's it going to take? Patience. Patience and a long time. Now, the key factor in getting this dog trained is earning its respect. We're not going to be able to force this dog to do anything. We have to earn this dog's respect. Come on. Oh, yeah, you can spin and turn. There we go. Good job. Good job. Very nice. Good job. Very good. Okay, so then I start to loosen up here. The dog just has to learn that nothing bad is going to happen but I'm the one that's in charge. And she is smart enough where she thinks that she needs to be in charge. And good job. Come here. Now here's where I spend some time with the dog, and I'm not going to try to force the dog to do anything until the dog will look at me in the eye. If the dog won't look at me in the eye, the dog's not ready. This dog is going to take some time. We're probably talking you know, weeks or months before this dog is ready to even think about going into the ring. But what we have to do is we have to get this dog to at least stand on the table without fighting. Yes, I know. There it is. Good. Move your foot. Move this foot. Good. 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 Head straight. Head straight. Head straight. See, this is perfect that you guys get an opportunity to see this. Because here, in most cases, they would say, this dog's scared to death. The dog's not scared. The dog does not want to lose this leadership that it's already established. Head straight. Good. Very good. Head straight. Good. Very good.
See how I'm just taking my time? Okay, then I'm, the dog did good, so I'm going to give it a little bit of... Yep. See, so doesn't this all make sense now? Good. Look at how she's getting taller and taller now. Good. There we go. Very good job. Okay, so now, show the bite. Very nice. Good. Awesome. That was good. That was good. Okay, let me see a piece of cheese. And don't look at her in the eye. Okay, come back over here. Come on. Okay, uh-uh. Oh, over here. I get good stuff. Be straight. Oh, that's good. Okay, we'll come over here. Come here. Over here. She's not going to want me to do anything I want to do. It's got to be her idea. And again, a dog that's afraid will not take food from you. So that's not what her issue is. So with this one here, all you have to do is work with that head straight, head straight, head straight until she firmly believes that you're the one that's in charge. Now, when she believes that you're the one that's in charge, she won't try to put her paw on you when you pick her up off and put her on the table. Right now, she tried to do that. You're just a bitch. Yes, yes. I know I'm telling all your secrets. Yes, I am. But that's good. Okay. You want mama back? Then you need to stand. Good. Stand. Come on. Isn't that cool that you get to see all these different problems? Okay. Now, what we're going to do now is you're going to force her to keep her head straight. When she moves back, you say, head straight. And firm with that. Good. Head okay. straight. Very nice. Good. Head straight as I come around head to straight. the back. Look at that, guys. Isn't that cool? Just one quick little session right there. Now if she did this every day for a month, what do you think would happen with this dog? All that nonsense would disappear. <coughs> Good. Okay, praise her and put her down on the ground, take her to the end. Oh, see that? She's trying to regain that being in charge. You gotta be smoother at that. Okay, do it again. Easy. Very good. Okay, one more time. That she said it right there. That's the dog, guys. Wasn't that cool? Yeah. Okay, so this is one. Of, <laughs> yeah, this is one thing I want you guys to work on. I want you to work on teaching the dog to come back to a baiting judge. When you're at a show, let's say you have a judge. It's a female judge with a set of tic tacs. Okay, you find some tic tacs. You give it to a strange lady. 
and then you have them shake those Tic Tacs and you give them a treat after they do that. Everybody else in the ring is going to come back and not know what to do. And when that lady shakes the Tic Tacs, what's your dog going to do? Bam! So you should be paying attention to what your judges are doing as you are watching. Unless you're the six to nine puppy dog at an 8 a.m. ring time, you have plenty of time to watch your judge. Head straight. Head straight. Get away from that dog. Make that dog stand out in front, like this. The problem with a lot of people is when they stack their dogs, they get right next to this dog. As I move back further, does that make that dog stand out and be the only thing in the picture, like this? Okay, this is what you want to look at. You don't want to look at this. See the difference there? Now you just have somebody holding a dog. And what is he doing? He's saying, nah, this ain't going to happen. This is, is not going to happen, I know. It's not. But come back over here. Come on. Over here. Good. Good. Come on. Come back. Over here. Okay, head straight. Head straight. See the difference there? Yeah. Get back. Present the dog now. Head straight. Like this. Head straight. Good. You want to figure out a way to create a pretty picture for those judges here. Head straight. And by doing that, it's becoming invisible and let the dog be the focus of what's going on out there. Good job. Oh, that's a good job. Okay, Mom. Ah, ah. See, there's the dominance thing right there. Soon as I got control of Harley, what, does he want to do? what did he want to do? He wanted to go dominate something. And he knew he couldn't dominate me, so what is he going to do? There's Mom over there. Okay. All right, Mom, make it look beautiful. Now he's trying to push your buttons. So is this dog ready to show? No. no. But if she worked on getting that head straight, wouldn't that be a beautiful picture? Yeah. Absolutely. That's good. Okay, so what, what kind of work do you have to do when you go home? Get that head straight. Right. Now, without having the knowledge of making that head straight, would this be a frustrating dog to show? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It would drive you nuts. But with the knowledge you guys have now because of this class, would this be a good dog to show? Yeah. Absolutely. Because he's got attitude. He's got everything you want. But you have to be the one that's in charge. The Rottweiler, another perfect example right there. That Rottweiler is drop dead gorgeous. But that Rottweiler is not going to be able to be shown by a cream puff. Not saying you're a cream puff, but I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but let me clarify that right there. Right but I'm saying if you put that Rottweiler with somebody with hardly any experience whatsoever, what would happen? He a lot, not literally, but <laughs> that he wouldn't do a thing. That dog wouldn't win the squat out there. Unless you had a judge that said, you know what? In spite of you, I'm giving this dog something. Yeah, exactly. So that's where I want to get in your guys' heads. I want you to understand that in order for you to win out here, you have to be the leader of the team. Otherwise, you're leaving it to chance. And if you leave it to chance, there's too many other factors there that's going to make you lose. I mean, with your cocker, gorgeous. I mean, when she's gating around, beautiful right there. On the table, that's all an act. She's being a bitch on the table, is what it is. Okay? You ready now? So take charge, head straight. There you go. Okay, so we're not going to push Harley because we don't want Harley to have a bad experience here. But Harley needs work. Harley needs to get that head straight. Mom's going to have to do some things to make sure that Harley understands that she's in charge. And it's going to be an extreme uphill battle now because Charlie's already lived a life where Charlie's in charge. Harley. Harley's in charge. Harley. Well, that's hard to say. Charlie's in charge. Harley. Whatever your name is. But look at that. Now try to stand away from your dog a little bit. 
There it is. Yeah. See, see that? Beautiful. That is gorgeous. Okay, take your dog around to the end. You see how these tiny little things are going to make the biggest difference in the world? It's not rocket science. Okay, go look at it. See, I didn't even throw it that time. Did you see that? Okay, so that's where, you, when you do this rock training thing, you can actually just sit there and throw things and make the sound, and it's like, what was that? I can't tell what that was. And then act like you're throwing it, but don't really throw it the next time, and right as the judges come around, bam, they just pull in up over the When you truck. guys stack your dogs, you should know your rate standard. When I'm looking at this dog here from the rear, I can only see two sets of feet because your rear is matching your front. So there you go. So the outside of your rear foot should be where the inside of your front foot is. Does that make sense? Okay, so stay stacked the way you are. You're stacked up. Okay. Okay, are you strong enough to lift the dog off the table? Okay, so lift your dog off the table. Okay, when we look at those poker chips, is that acceptable for your breed? Not at all. Sometimes when your dogs are low to the ground, or you have table dogs, it's a good idea to have a set of four of these poker chips. Sit them right there next to the feet, take the dog off the table and go, uh-oh. <laughs> because if this was a correct bulldog and we stacked it properly, let's say it's facing you, here's the front feet. Now the inside portion of the front feet, if I come back like this, should be the outside portion of my rear feet. And that's a bulldog. See how that is? Now after she stacked her dog and I put the poker chips on it, it was like that. Now, you may think you're doing a great job, but all the judge has to do is take a glance, see those feet, and guess what? You're out of the competition already. That quick. So little teeny tiny details. Does that make it easy for you now to? Yeah, that helps a lot. Yeah, that's pretty cool, because this is a very difficult breed because they're so low to the ground to tell exactly what you're doing with your feet. So you, you can have, have to do that over and over and over again. Okay, so let's come back up and let's see if we can get your dog the way it needs to be this time. I hope you guys don't mind that we're taking lots of time with all this stuff, but I want you to leave here today with some really cool tips that will help you in situations in the future, even if you don't have these problems right now. But this is stuff to really super fine tune. I mean, I'm talking fine tuning here. Because sometimes you can walk out of the ring and lose and not understand why you lost and thinking you did everything right. There's great poker chips because you can practice getting them in the right position quick. Right. Okay, take your dog off the table. Okay, come back over here and tell me what you see. Perfect. All right. Good job. Woo okay. So here, she's, she's got a great little dog here, but she's going to go into the ring and she's going to get hammered with reserves. And the reason why she, you know, it's, she's thinking, okay, gosh, she's, the handlers are doing it, or this is doing it, that are doing it. But in this particular case here, bam, that's what's happening. Now one of the reasons and the ways that I came up with this right here was actually by teaching a bulldog person. Because I could not get her to realize what she was doing was wrong. You know, videotape, all that stuff. So I figured, okay, I'll go ahead and trace her steps. So I went and got poker chips and did this. And found out it works great for other breeds too. 
So as a handler, I recognize there was a problem. I tried to figure out a solution for that problem. And that's what you have to do. You have to think on your feet. Does the level that you hold this muzzle have any effect on whether that makes the head look good or bad? Yes. Okay, explain that to me. It's supposed to be in a parallel. The eyes, the ears are all supposed to be in a parallel. Right. The nose, the eyes, the ear. Good. That's good. Give her a hand. But again, if you don't understand this, you can be... I've, I've seen this one lady at a show where she had this gorgeous head on this dog, and she had this muzzle just pointing to the ground, and you could not see that. If the judges can't see what they need to in order to judge this dog, you can't win. So make it easy for the judges. Good. I never want this lead tight. I'm going to step into his area here, and I back up, and I stand up. Very good. Yeah. That's nice. Good. Back up. Back. 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 Very nice. Good. See with your hands together here? That makes such a pretty step. Okay, now I want his butt to be over there. So in order to do that, I have to put my butt facing the opposite direction. So I turn my butt here, and then he's going to turn his butt, thank you, just like that. It's like a dance step. Now, what you don't want to do is steer the dog. Get over here. Come on. You don't want to do this. How pretty does that look? Doesn't look pretty at all, huh? You want to teach this dog respect, boundaries, and body language. Back. Back. Good. Okay, there you go. Who has the best dog? Okay, there we go. Who's the best handler in this ring? Yeah! <laughs>